What's up, New Life Church? My name's Kevin, um, and I was asked to share some wisdom that my wife Hope and I have gleaned over our 20 plus years of marriage. And so all kinds of things came to mind, but I wanted to land on one idea, one principle that might help you um, experience peace and delight in your home, because I think that that's one of the marks of man, a godly marriage is that there's peace, not all the time, because there's gonna be conflict, but ultimately you live in a state of peace and delight in one another. Um, And so I wanna wanna share a principle that I think can help you get there, but that principle then is going to lead to a response. And that response definitely is gonna get you to a place where you're experiencing more peace and more delight. So here's the idea. You are stuck with each other right go be blessed you are stuck with your spouse right because god's design for marriage is one man and one woman for life and and so you have to embrace this idea that you have to think in terms of decades and not in terms of weeks right because what is easier in weeks is often detrimental in decades let me give you an example um so for instance like conflict miscommunication hurt feelings like it, it's easier to just kind of squash that down and, and it'll give you the sense of peace for a week, maybe two weeks. But as those things begin to pile up, next thing you know, you're exploding out in anger and frustration about things that had nothing to do with that bottom layer of frustration or hurt or miscommunication. And so it seems like it's easier to just drop it but not if you're stuck together for decades, right? My wife loves to say it this way. Hey, Kevin, I will never divorce you, but I am not above killing you, (laughs) right? For her, murder is more of an option than divorce. So if I ever come to an untimely demise, uh, you know who to look to first, right? So the first thing is this, is that you are, you're stuck together. Embrace that idea because if you'll embrace that idea, then it leads to the response, which is this, stop blaming and start problem solving, right? Because if it's Hope's fault or it's Kevin's fault, Hope's fault, it's Kevin's fault, we're not gonna make any progress at all. But if we embrace the idea of we are team little and we together have to figure out how to move forward from this miscommunication, how to move forward from this hurt feeling, how to move forward from this thing that isn't working in our family. And again, it's not her fault, it's not my fault, It's just a problem that Team Little has to solve. It's gonna bring more peace and more delight into our life. I'll tell you one of the ways that we came to this epiphany is early on in our marriage when we had no kids, just one cat. Now we have three, thanks Hope. Um, One cat, Hope and I, both youngest siblings, and if you know anything about youngest siblings, nothing is ever our fault. We're like Teflon, baby, nothing sticks to us. And so Hope and I were in this conversation, some might call it an argument, And although these weren't the exact words, this was the sentiment. I would say, Hope, it's not my fault. It must be your fault. And her response was, well, it's definitely not my fault. So Kevin, it must be your fault. And we must've gone back and forth in this way 20 times. And then we had a cat and the cat is sitting on the bed and it's like the cat is looking back and forth at us like she's watching a tennis match. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm just gonna say it was the Holy Spirit dropping this in my heart. I go, wait, Hope, it's the cat. Cat's fault. And Hope's face lightened and her eyes grew big and she goes, yeah, it's the cat's fault. And it was amazing because once we had fully placed the blame on the scape cat, um, we were able to then work together as Team Little to move forward from this problem. And so one question that I love to ask that can help you stop blaming and move forward is, uh, number one, say, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. We've clearly had a miscommunication. I've clearly hurt your feelings. Like own whatever it is that has transpired or happened. How are we going to move forward? Right? Because we can, we can talk about the hurt feelings, the miscommunications, the way I messed up in the past. But together, we now have to answer the question together. What are we going to do to move forward? Okay, there, there's this verse I want, want to share with you. It's from Galatians 5. It's, it's, in, it's in verse 15. And it says this, and it's Paul talking about living in the freedom of Christ, living by the Holy Spirit, and not by this checklist morality where you have to live up to an expectation where you can't be blamed for anything. And if he goes, he says, this is one of the marks of living like that. He says, 
if you bite and devour each other. So right, if it's always about whose fault it is, that's biting and devouring one another. Who didn't check the right box? But if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Blame leads to a destroyed soul. If not that, then it definitely will lead to destruction in your marriage. And so stop blaming. So what's the contrast? What's the alternative that Paul presents? Rewind two verses and look at verse 13. It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Jesus has paid for all my blame, all my mistakes. He's covered it. He's communicated value and worth that is independent of my actions. And I'm free and I need to embrace that. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. But I'm not going to do that just to then live like a jerk and do whatever the heck I want. No, instead, serve one another humbly in love. Like if I can let go of blame and I can wor not worry about, am I, is it my fault? But instead, I can just show up being free and choosing in that freedom to love my spouse humbly and serve her out of that love. Well, then there then peace and delight follow and he wraps it up by saying this for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command the entire path of god is locked into one command love your neighbor as yourself or in this context we might say love your spouse as yourself so y'all you're you're free from blame but don't use that freedom to do whatever the heck you want instead serve one another don't blame each other, work together to move forward. So what are the principles? It's this, embrace this idea that you are stuck with each other, that you're trying to do marriage for a lifetime, not a week. And when you do that, then if you realize you're stuck together, then it's gonna be easier to work through issues rather than just stuff them. And when you start working through the issues, you must stop blaming and instead problem solve together. How? can we move forward together as team Lou or as team whatever your all's last name is. So, love you guys. Hope this helps.